Have you noticed that College Board has kicked up the difficulty on the math questions towards the end of Module 2? I have many students that come to us for digital SAT help that say that they run out of time and they have so much difficulty with these problems. Then you look at the crazy answer explanations from College Board and they look like this. I'm sorry, College Board, but I don't want to read a novel to figure out how to solve this thing. Well, what if I told you there's an amazing hack using Desmos to solve a lot of these really tricky problems? Not only will you mitigate Carol's mistakes and pick up the point, but you'll save lots of extra time to go back and check your work. And you can use Desmos way more than you think you can, even on some geometry problems, which I'm going to show you today. I'm really excited because I picked six of the toughest problems I've seen to walk you through one at a time. And please be sure to stick around for question six. It's by far my favorite hack of the whole group. Now, after watching this video, once you see instantaneous improvement in your SAT math score, I just ask that you split all your scholarship money with me 50-50. Okay, 60-40? 80-20? Okay, okay, I'll take 10%. All right, guys, before we get started with the problems, if you like this video and you want to learn more Desmos hacks in depth, including types of problems you don't want to use Desmos on, I have a Desmos crash course coming up. Check our events page. I will link it up right here and sign up for that. Also, please comment below and let me know how much you're using Desmos right now on your practice tests. Is it 25%, 50%, 75%? Are you using it 100% of the time? If you're using it 100% of the time, you might need to rethink that, no cap. That's giving, you really don't know what you're doing. Side note, is it cringe when I speak Gen Z? Comment below. All right, guys, this whole problem set is actually in the description below so that you can follow along with me. You can print it out. You can take notes on it. So that's definitely there for you if you want to do these problems with me. Let's talk about problem one, because if you see a problem that's a system of equations and then you see answer choices with R's in them, Basically, this is a case where the system is probably infinite, meaning they're the same line when you graph both of them. And all you need to do is put the answer choices into Desmos to see which one runs along the entire line. So let me show you guys what I mean. As you can see, I already put both equations in here. If I remove the blue line, see how the red line is right underneath? That's because they're the same exact line. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test A. So on the next line, I'm gonna put in R comma three minus three halves R. And since it's not an X or a Y, it's gonna ask you to add a slider. So go ahead and hit that. Then when you move the slider around, do you see how the dot goes straight up and down the entire line? That means answer choice A is the correct answer. Now, just so you can see what a wrong answer looks like, I'm gonna put in answer choice B. So we have R comma three minus R over two. I'll add my slider again. Now check this out. See how the purple dot does not follow the line? So that's how you know the answer is incorrect. So easy peasy, if you see R's in the answers, go ahead and put it in Desmos. All right, guys, if you're finding this video helpful so far, make sure to smash the subscribe button below if you haven't yet, because I come out with free content every single week to help you master the SAT. Okay, our next problem is really great for Desmos as well, because if you have one constant, like in this case, they said, a is a non-zero constant, you can throw it in Desmos and then move the slider around to get what you want. In this case, you'll notice all of our answer choices have A in them. So they basically want to know which of the following is equal to K. As you can see, K is going to be the Y value of the vertex. So if you basically have all the answer choices still saying A, and they're just expressions, that means you can make A whatever you want, because when A changes, your vertex will change as well. 
But then whatever you make A, you're going to put it in all the answer choices until it matches the vertex when A is that value. Let me just show you. I hope that's not too confusing. So as you can see, I just typed it in. I'm going to add my slider. I want to zoom in. I really like keeping A as 1 because then it's just easy to work with when I plug 1 into all the answer choices. And I'm looking for the vertex. And it looks like the, ver oh, I, hang on, I got to change this to a plus. Okay. It looks like the vertex is at negative 2.25 because I made A1. So that would be negative 1. That is not where the Y coordinate of the vertex is at. The Y coordinate of the vertex is at negative 2.25. And, you know, if you're not good at mental math, you can always on the next line test negative 9 fourths. And as you can see, you get negative 2.25 because you're just going to multiply that by A, which is 1. So that's what we want. That's why the answer is going to be B. So if you have one constant in the problem, Desmos is great. It's when you have multiple constants. Like if they give you an A, B, and C, that's not a good time to use Desmos because there's too many moving parts and you'll have too many sliders. All right, guys, if this is helpful so far, show me some love. Hit the like button below. All right, this third problem is perfect for a regression. So just to run you through what you want to look for to know if you can run a regression. You need at least two points on the function. And as you can see, the table, they give you three. And you need the equation of the function, which they also provide. Now, what you're going to want to do is um, recognize that it will not read function notation. So we have an f of x on the top. We're going to have to change that to an actual equation so that Desmos can recognize it when we run a regression and they said f is a linear function. So essentially a line is y equals mx plus b. You know, h of x, that's our y out here. So we really just need to put the mx plus b part on the top to signify that that's a line. So let me just show you how to do regression in steps. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a table of values. So when I go to Desmos, I'm going to type in the word table and it will pop up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start typing in those sets of coordinates. So I have negative 18, 3. I have negative 6, 5. And I have 6, 1. Perfect. And then on the next line, I'm going to tell Desmos to run a regression on it. Now you have auto regressions over here. So I just hit on the left hand side the lines with the dots. That's if it's a simple equation, like it's just a linear equation or it's just a quadratic equation, then you can run these autoregressions. The problem is this is a little bit more complex than just a simple equation. So we're going to actually have to type it in on the next line. Couple things to note, you cannot use X and Y. You have to use X1 and Y1 so that it pulls from the table of values. So instead of typing h of x, right, because that's a function notation, I'll get confused. I'm going to type y1. Instead of using an equal sign, you have to use a tilde. Guys, I don't know why this is. It's just kind of like coding. It's just the way for the Desmos regression program to work. So I'm going to do a tilde, which essentially is the button on your keyboard next to the number 1. And then I'm going to type in my equation. So remember on top, they said uh, f of x was a line. I'm going to type in mx1, not mx, plus b. And then underneath it, I'm going to type in x1 plus 2. And here we go. Here's our graph. Now, the question, you always want to go back to the question. The question is asking, what is the y-intercept of f of x? OK, f of x is just the top part of the equation. It's just the line. So when you look at this picture, we don't see a line graphed. This is the picture of h of x. So you do not want to go here and go, oh, the y-intercept is at negative 3, because that's not the right y-intercept. They're not asking for h of x. They want it for f of x. So if you look over here, we have these regression parameters, and essentially the B is the y-intercept for the mx plus B part, so the answer is going to be negative 6. 
And let's just see where that is. Perfect. That's D. All right. My next problem I wanted you to see because I want you to understand that you can run a regression even if they don't give you a table. I think lots of students look just for them to give you a table to run the regression, and that is not the case. So what I want you guys to understand is if you have at least two points and they give you the equation of the function, you can run a regression. So I'm actually going to run a regression on this as well. Let's go ahead. We're going to go to Desmos, and I'm going to type in table. And I'm going to go ahead and throw in my table of values. Now, there is an auto regression for um, exponential. But as you can see, it's a little different than what we need because it's multiplying the constant with the other part of it. And in this case, it's actually addition. So you don't want to run an auto regression on this. You need to type in manually what the equation is. So on the next line, because it's a regression, I'm going to type in y1 tilde, and then I'm going to do a to the x1 power, right? I can't do to the x. Look at what happens if I do to the x. You get an error. See how on the side right here you get that error message? That's how you know you probably forgot a y1 or an x1. So let me go ahead, throw the 1 in there. Then we've got it. They wanted to know what is the value of a times b. Well, the parameters give us a is 3 and b is 3. So easy peasy. I just need to do 3 times 3 and I get 9. All right. My fifth Desmos hack for you is to recognize when they give you two equations and they use language like can be rewritten as or is equivalent to. Because in these cases, what you can do is you can put the first equation on line one. You can put the second equation on line two in Desmos. And what you want to do is you want to get the graphs to perfectly overlap. That's when they're equivalent. So let's go ahead and we're going to do that in Desmos right now. Now, a big thing with using Desmos is make sure you type it in exactly as the problem gives it to you. The biggest mistake I see students make is they carelessly type in the equation, they forget a negative sign, or they change a plus to a time sign or something, and then they get the question wrong. Or maybe one of the numbers that they typed in was incorrect. So just be very careful. Make sure that you've typed it in accurately. Now, what's cool about this problem is we don't need to move the slider P around to get it to work because they gave us four values of p. So when they give you values for the constant, just type in each one and it will save you some time. So I'm going to try 18 first. Now, as you can see, those graphs really are not exactly the same. Let me try 21. Wow, they're almost perfectly overlapping. If I go to the next one, 47, now they get further apart. So 21 was the closest. So because I said, which of the following is closest? Look for that language. It doesn't need to be exact. It's an approximate. So our answer is going to be 21. All right. And now we are on to the final problem, which is by far my favorite hack. It's a geometry problem. So at first glance, you would think, oh, my gosh, I can't use Desmos for this. But I can assure you, you can. So the first thing is if they say it's an equilateral triangle and the perimeter is 1314, 1314, we want to know what each side length is. So if you take 1314 and you divide it by 3, you get 438. So as you can see, I've already drawn a, a triangle on here in an xy coordinate plane, and I'll explain that in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and label each side 438. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to get three points. So just a heads up, if you have a circle, you want three points on the circle. If you only do two points, Desmos will not be able to recognize the curve and it won't be able to generate what you need in regards to the circle equation. Because, guys, we're going to run a regression on this, too. So since I basically put the triangle in the xy coordinate plane centered at the y axis and basically on the x axis, I know 
what the points are because you know this part right here is going to be a base that's one half of 438 so that means that that point right there i'm at 219 comma zero now if i go in the other direction i'm at negative 219 comma zero if i go up i'm not sure where i'm at yet but if you're good with special rate triangles and you know oh if it was equilateral this is a 60 this is a 90, this is a 30, so I have a special right triangle, 30, 60, 90. My X is 219, so this side must be 219 radical 3, okay? That's my height. So if my height is 219 radical 3, which I just got from knowing the ratios of the sides of a special right 30, 60, 90, which if you don't know that, you can look at the reference table in the upper corner. If you click that, it will tell you what the ratios of the sides are. My other point is going to be at 0, 219 square root of 3. Awesome. I have three points. I know the equation of a circle. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run a regression on this. So let's go into Desmos and I'm going to type in table and I'll put in my values. So I've got negative 219, 0. I've got 219, 0. And then I have 0, 219, and then square root of 3. Okay. On the next line, I'm going to type in my equation of the circle, which is basically x1 minus h squared plus y1 minus k squared tilde r squared, which r stands for the radius. So now that that's in there, what I can do is they said that the radius is w square root of 3. So if the radius is w square root of 3, what we need to do is we need to divide the radius by square root of 3 to get w because they just want w. So on the next line in Desmos, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to type uh, r divided by square root 3. And look at, I get the answer 146, and I'm all done. And I did that geometry problem just with Desmos. Well, there you have it. Those are some of my favorite Desmos hacks to conquer hard questions on module two. Which problem was your favorite? Comment below and let me know. Also, we have a full module for Desmos in our self-paced math course. So if you wanna dig in to more math strategies, concepts, and especially go deeper with Desmos, you can sign up right here. I'll put the link up. Use the promo code 50 off at checkout and you will get $50 off the course. All right, that's it guys. Until next time, happy prepping.